few weeks ago, I left the Pacific Northwest and headed south. Uh, I was getting a little tired of the chilly weather. I won't call it cold. People get after me for calling it cold up there, but it got down into uh, the low 20s when I was out in the Olympic uh, Mountains and uh, froze a bunch of stuff in the van. So to me it was cold, but uh, we'll call it chilly here. Anyway, I was getting tired of the chilly and I was getting tired of the wet all the time. Um, so I just decided to head south and I am now in uh, an area that is much warmer and certainly much sunnier. Uh, heading out to some free camping outside of Joshua Tree National Park. So I have a few miles to go yet before we get up to the Cottonwood entrance of Joshua Tree uh, right off the 10 freeway and we're going up this rather steep grade and I don't know if it shows up on camera quite as steep as it is but uh, it can be troublesome in the summertime so I'm glad to be doing this in the winter time. There's been several times I've been driving up this part of the 10 freeway and uh, have passed people with blown out tires and overheated engines and blown engines so not not a trip I like to take in the summer uh, but today's a nice cool day it's uh, well I'm not sure exactly what it is my vehicles dash is saying it's 64 degrees outside so that's a uh, nice weather as far as I'm concerned It doesn't look like it's too packed out here, but there are a lot of people, which is what I was expecting. I mean, this is the winter time. We got lots of uh, snowbirds that uh, head down here. I guess I am now a snowbird, uh, too. I sh should include myself in that because this is what I came down here for. Uh, left the Pacific Northwest to get a little better weather, so I guess I'm a snowbird. I think I've taken the wrong road here. I probably should have taken the next road to the left because there's camping on both sides. Uh, basically, I'm just looking for a spot that somebody else has parked on uh, before because uh, if you've never camped out in the desert before, uh, it can be really tricky. You, you might see a spot that looks good, but it'll be really soft sand and if you drive out on it, you'll just sink. Uh, which every time I've been out here, I've seen somebody just sunk down to their axle in sand, and I don't want to do that. But we'll just take our time and drive along here and find a spot that looks good. I uh, just passed a spot on the other road, like I thought. So I'm going to go see if I can go grab it. And you're probably hearing my uh, spare water jug sloshing around. I gotta do something about that. It's driving me crazy. Well, this spot looks good. Uh, oddly, I think I've camped in this exact spot before, uh, although I could be a little off because they all look the same. Uh, there's not much going on out here. This is just outside of Joshua Tree National Park, and this is uh, run by federal lands, but uh, not national park lands. So if you've heard of BLM, this is Bureau of Land Management uh, lands here, and there's quite a bit of it. In fact, there's more of it on the other side of the freeway and i think it's a little prettier on the other side of the freeway the only reason i don't ever park over there or camp over there is there's a lot more loose sand than there is uh here in this spot so one of these days i need to get over there to the other side of the town and check that out but this is a good spot i'm not too close to neighbors uh so uh I think I'm happy with this and we'll see how long I stay here certainly tonight but um, being that this is uh, free land run by uh, BLM I can stay here up to 14 days if I want to
Well, I've been doing so much driving over the last couple of weeks that I would really like to get out and walk around. I uh, did more driving this morning and not really what I wanted to do, but I did want to get out to a place that I could just camp for a while if I wanted. Uh, so it's probably worth the drive out, but um, being that I was in a hurry to get on the road, I didn't make any breakfast. So I did make um, road coffee. I always make road coffee. That's a given. But I should probably make some breakfast. Uh, but I really want to just take a walk. But breakfast first, then we'll take a little walk and uh, check out the area. Well, it's a little cooler up here than I anticipated. Uh, I'm wearing a light sweater, but I need a little better sweater. Put my uh, light jacket on, I guess. We'll call this a jacket, because whenever I call this a sweater, people get after me. Uh, I don't want to start that again, should I? Well, I already did. <laughs> Let's make a burrito. Although I'm almost out of coffee. Should I make more coffee? No, burrito. I need food. Well, it's a bit breezy out, so I had to close the door, and I'm missing the sun. <laughs> the thing I came to find. Uh, but we'll get the door back open once I get my food made. I just find that um, the stove is pretty good about a little bit of wind, but if I've got uh, kind of a heavy wind coming in, then it does blow it out uh, occasionally. I'll be sitting here thinking like, why is my food not cooking? And why am I smelling gas? And then I realize, oh, the flame is out. Uh, and then at that point, I usually close the door. But today, I think the wind is up enough that I just need to keep the door closed uh, before I even start. What am I making? Uh, yeah. Burrito. I've got eggs. I've got tortillas. I've got butter. What else do I need? Um, oh, I did some prep the other day. I prepped up some onions and uh, onions and bell pepper, some red bell pepper. Not that you can tell because they're in a red container. should probably do that again. Uh, it's really nice to have this just prepped and ready to go. So I may, uh, I may do that today, add that to the list today of things to do. So having these peppers and onions already cooked and at the ready, I just toss them in a pan here and warm them up a little bit and then I'll uh, obviously toss in my eggs. Oh, and then I'm just now realizing I forgot to cut up some cheese to add to my burrito. I gotta do that or I'm not gonna be happy. Well, with the uh, traveling I've been doing, I have not been keeping up on some of the little tasks that I normally do. Uh, one of those is keeping up my seasoning on my pan. The seasoning's not bad, but it's just not what it should be. So I've got a little sticking here. Probably wasn't watching my heat uh, as well as I should have either. But um, if the seasoning was really good, I wouldn't have any sticking. So I'm going to have to add this to the list today to uh, clean up the pan and give it a nice fresh uh, coat of seasoning so I don't have that to deal with anymore. Oh, I forgot. I stopped at a little health food store on my drive down and I picked up some Yellow Bird Serrano, my absolute favorite hot sauce. So this will be perfect with uh, my egg burrito here. I'm going to load it on. You know, when I, when I first buy a new bottle, I go crazy and I just add a bunch. And then when I start to get down low on the bottle. I start adding less and less because I don't really want to be buying this all the time. This is a really expensive hot sauce, uh, so I very rarely buy it anymore, and I've not had any for several months. So I'm happy to have some more, and I'm going to enjoy this a whole lot. An egg burrito is good, but adding a little bit of that yellow bird makes it even better. Okay, got everything cleaned up from breakfast. Clean as you go. That's what I learned in the restaurant industry, and so that's what I try to do here too, because I don't have a whole lot of space here, so if I get messy, uh, it's a major disaster. Same as when I was working in a professional kitchen. We didn't have a lot of space, so uh, good training for van life. I didn't know it at the time. 
Um, so I did a little initial clean on my pan. I th think I'm going to come back to this because uh, I would really like to take a walk. I'd really like some coffee too, but uh, I'll do that later. I think as cold as it looks like it's going to be tonight, probably going to want lots and lots of coffee later today. Well, I figure I'll just walk a little ways here. Uh, I don't want to go too far, but I really need to move. And there is certainly plenty of space to move around out here. I have to admit, I've been feeling a bit off the last uh, couple of weeks being back here in Southern California. I really didn't want to come back to Southern California this year. I was actually thinking of staying up in the Pacific Northwest, but uh, winter got a little worse than I was anticipating. So that's why I ski-daddled in parts. Uh, the other part of that was I wanted to uh, meet up with family. So uh, it just made it easier to meet with them at some other family's house in East LA. That worked out really well. I met my parents. Uh, they don't live in California anymore. They haven't for years. Uh, but they drove out uh, to East LA and we all met at uh, the old family house. So it ended up being a really nice time. Um, but it put me back in the place that I don't really want to be. And I don't want to make that sound like I'm complaining. Um, Happy to be back. I'm happy to have spent time with family. Well, and also, weather is just so much better down here. Um, although, funny thing, I checked the weather last night when I was deciding I was going to camp here uh, outside of Joshua Tree, and uh, they said it was going to be full sun, no clouds. Don't know about that one, but anyway, it's beautiful. I like to see little clouds up in the sky. Uh, Straight blue sky is nice too, but some clouds are fantastic for uh, just a little bit of drama, I think. One of the things that's been a bit of a difficult adjustment for me being back here in Southern California is dealing with the traffic. Uh, it's just unrelenting. And if you're from here, you know what I'm talking about exactly. I uh, had a little bit of that when I was in the Pacific Northwest in certain areas, but um, I was staying out of those areas pretty much uh, all the time. I mean, at least as much as I could. But uh, it doesn't seem like there's a way to get away from it in much of Southern California, but certainly once you get out here, uh, it's a little bit better. Uh, although, even on the freeway out here, um, just coming up uh, the 10 here, up the big hill. Right before there, it just got really busy all of a sudden and I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I, I just uh, couldn't quite figure out where's all this traffic come from and why is it just so crazy busy? At least it's much better here, uh, just outside of Joshua Tree. No traffic at all at the moment. Joshua Tree National Park is straight ahead there, and there's a little access road we can't quite see. Sometimes I walk up and down it, but it's usually pretty busy, and it's somewhat busy today, so uh, I'm just going to walk in the desert here. Probably safer and, uh, well, you know, just nicer to be away from cars. Uh, and I am parked right down there. Not sure if I can see the top of my van or not, or if that's somebody else's, but I think I'm going to head back, even though I haven't gone too far, because I've done what I normally do. I don't bring water with me, and then all of a sudden, I'm thirsty. <laughs> so back to the van. Now, one thing that I always forget until I get up here to Joshua Tree is that there is something that grows here that I'm allergic to. I've not figured out what it is. I almost think it's mesquites, but I'm not, I'm not sure if mesquite grows here. Uh, I don't know much about plants, but there's a certain smell, and when I smell it, 
I, I remember, oh yeah, that's, that's the thing that uh, I'm allergic to, but um, it took a little while, but my nose is starting to run and get a little stuffed up. And I know I'm belly aching a lot here. Uh, you know, a little runny nose, boo-hoo. And I had to deal with some traffic, and I don't want to be back in beautiful Southern California. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm complaining a lot, but you know what? Uh, that's all just talk. It's sure nice to be back here. It's really nice to be back here. Okay, first things first, gotta get the kettle on, and I'm actually feeling a little bit hungry, so maybe I should uh, get a snack too, but uh, I need to uh, sit down for a few minutes because I've got a little research I need to do. Well, over the last week and a half or so, I've only been drinking one, maybe two cups of coffee a day, and uh, that kind of thing ends now. So I have some of my favorite coffee left. Uh, this is a Groundwork Ethiopian. I talk about this often. Uh, this is really premium coffee and I hardly ever buy it anymore, but I just happen to find this bag on a really good sale. And uh, to try to prolong my enjoyment of it, I've been working on two bags of coffee. Uh, my parents gave me a bag. Well, they gave me two bags of coffee, but I opened up one of the bags that they gave me. I've been going back and forth between that one and this one. Uh, but really, I need to get this one done. I need to just finish this one off because this one was already opened. Uh, and the most important thing about coffee is freshness. Getting a, a coffee that is freshly roasted and then drinking it right away is the best thing. Uh, when you buy coffee like this, it's pre-packaged and comes from another place. This is roasted in LA and I bought it back when I was in the Pacific Northwest somewhere. Uh, and when they do that, they usually flush the bags with some nitrogen. Uh, so that will kind of help keep them a little bit fresher for a little bit longer. Uh, but I've had this open for so long, I need to drink it. So I need to just focus on getting this bag done. You know, it's a terrible thing that I have to drink a little more coffee lately. You know, if, if I've got to drink four or five cups a day so that I uh, get through this bag of coffee, I'll do that because this stuff's expensive and you know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna just waste money. I'm gonna have some chips and salsa while I'm waiting for my coffee to brew. And this is really just an excuse to eat some more of this uh, Yellowbird Serrano hot sauce that I like so much. I've been using this AeroPress brewer for a long time and uh, I still get questions about it even though I've made whole videos dedicated to how I use it, how I brew with it. Uh, I do a little different method than what comes in the packaging and some people get after me and tell me I'm doing it wrong. Uh, you know, there's no right and wrong. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> such a really good brewer and I talk about it a lot because I just really like it. If you want a really good cup of coffee, uh, you really should take some time, have a lot of equipment uh, to make sure you're weighing everything out properly and make sure that you are uh, brewing it uh, as well as you can do. But with the AeroPress, you really don't need to do a whole lot. This is just a really forgiving brewer. From time to time, I'll buy some really inexpensive coffee. Now today I'm using some really premium coffee, but when I do use really inexpensive coffee, it makes it taste halfway to premium coffee. Uh, and that's what I really like about this brewer. So uh, AeroPress, fantastic brewer. I don't have any association with the company. Uh, actually, I should bring up the fact that I don't have any association with um, Yellowbird either. These are just things that I really like, uh, and if I like them, I figure maybe somebody else will like them. For years and years and years, I used this brewer here. This is a pour-over brewer made by a Japanese company call, called Hario. Uh, they make my uh, pour-over 
kettle here too and I bought the kettle because I needed it to use with the brewer and it's a great brewer don't get me wrong but it takes a lot of skill and it takes a lot of effort to make sure you get a really good cup of coffee uh, with this AeroPress and with these really good coffee beans I can drink this without any cream of course I never put sugar in my coffee but I uh, usually put cream but I can drink this without cream and really enjoy it which I think I'm gonna do for at least part of this cup now don't be alarmed about how much coffee I'm drinking because I am drinking water too uh, in fact I need to refill my jug here from my uh, homemade Berkey filter I usually just call it a Berkey filter but it isn't really a Berkey filter because I made it myself but it really works well and I do all of my drinking water out of it and on days where I'm feeling like I'm a little bit more dehydrated I'll take a little bit of uh, some pink salt and I don't like to add it to my water but I'll just add some pink salt onto my tongue uh, before I take my first swig of water it's the first thing I do every morning uh, but lately since I'm back in Southern California uh, I've been doing it more and more I know a lot of people try to stay away from salt but I did too for a lot of years but when I've started to do this I have been feeling so much better uh, not telling you to do it I'm just telling you what I'm doing Well, I need to do a little bit of research, and I seem to have a little bit of uh, cell service out here. I uh, wasn't sure about that. Sometimes in the wintertime, uh, if there's a lot of people out here, cell service is not great, but it seems to be good today. So uh, I'm going to do a little research on tires because I had a little bit of trouble when I uh, headed down here from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I've got some older tires on the front of the van here uh, these are falcon tires a smaller brand a little cheaper is why i bought them and they were supposed to be a quiet tire they're what's called a touring tire uh, and they just haven't worked out real well for me i found out that these are really awful on uh, rainy type roads and i was having some really bad issues with hydroplaning as i was driving down here it was so bad at one point I actually had to stop and just spend a day in a little town just because it just felt unsafe. Now the back of the van has Falcons as well but they are a newer tire and a different model of tire. I'm a little bit happier with those. I think they hold up in the rain a little bit better. Uh, neither one of these is good for snow but I try to avoid snow as much as possible. But um, I think it's time to get rid of these tires. They're just dangerous. Uh, looking at them today a few minutes ago, I realized they're down pretty close to the wear indicators. And so that may be affecting their wet weather handling uh, a, a little more than I've noticed in the past. They've never been good in the wet, but uh, they're downright scary now. So uh, I'm gonna sit down and see if I can find some tires in the area that aren't too expensive that I can replace these. Uh, lucky enough, two on the back are new, so I just need to buy two for the front uh, and just need to make a decision on that. Tires are expensive, so I've been kind of putting this off, but now that I have a few minutes, I'm going to tackle this issue. Okay, that was pretty productive. Uh, right up until my cell service just stopped working. I think there's a lot of people around here and There's not a lot of cell towers obviously, so uh, I Think I'm just out of service because probably everybody has come back to their RVs and gotten on their phones and laptops and everything uh, But before I ran out of service, I had it narrowed down to a couple of tires uh, the only thing I wasn't able to do was check stock in areas and that's going to be a little tricky because I'm not really sure where I'm headed to next uh, since I'm here in a nice quiet place without crazy traffic running around and I don't have to drive anywhere. Uh, I could just stay put. So I'll do that later. Happy to have a little research and get uh, a little peace of mind on what I'm going to do uh, tire-wise. Um, prices are a little crazy, but... Uh, 
there is one tire that is not too outrageously priced so that's good to know and now turning my attention to other things um i had a few little odds and ends that i wanted to get done on the van but i'm really thinking i want to take a shower so i'm going to try to set up my shower enclosure now i'm saying shower enclosure and not shower tent because my shower tent i don't think will work in the wind uh, but I do have a tarp that I'll set up from time to time. So I'm, I'm going to try that, see if I can get it done. And if I can, I'll take a shower before I make dinner. I would feel better, sleep better. It's been an awful long time since I've had a shower. Let's see if this works. This is not the easiest thing to set up when it's really windy out. I have to kind of struggle with this a little bit, but I uh, use some of these tarp uh, bungees to secure it to my roof rack on the one side and then fold it over the back doors here. Uh, I do have some stakes that the uh, tarp came with so I can nail these into the ground and anything else that's a little bit flappy. I have some of these uh, magnet hooks uh, that I bought at Harbor Freights <laughs> uh, and I'll either I'll either use these uh, through the little loops on the tarp or I'll just stick these uh, on top of the tarp uh, onto the van since they're magnets. They're really good magnets. So this will take me a few minutes. Or not. Maybe I won't even be able to do it with, uh, with the wind if the wind keeps picking up. Let's see. Well, it's actually a little bit too windy to be doing this, but I got it done. If it's not so windy, this is works out really well. But with the wind, of course, this just acts like a big sail and takes off. But I think I've got it pretty good. I've got it staked down here pretty good. And with my back doors open, I have just enough room to stand up inside. Um, the shower tent's a little bit more roomy as far as how tall it is, but this gives me a little more space around. So I kind of like this setup a little bit better. So now that I know that this is going to hold, I'm going to take some water, heat it up on my stove top, and then I'm going to get out my shower head, which is this here. So what I use for my shower is this repurposed Dr. Bronner's bottle. I was just about to toss this in the recycling bin when I realized that I could use this as a makeshift uh, shower. So I put some hot water in it and because it's a nice thick heavy duty plastic that is also really uh, squeezable too, it works out really well. Um, and the top shower head part of it is just a water bottle top that I poked a bunch of holes in by uh, taking a sewing needle, heating them up on my stove top, and then poking holes through uh, the, the top here. And it makes a really good shower head. Uh, somebody in the comments of a video long ago told me to do that. And when I got to making this, I just thought, hey, that was a really good idea. So uh, whoever you were, thank you uh, for that idea. Um, I used to have an instant hot water heater that was mounted on my door and it broke and I never could figure out what was going on with it and the more I thought about it the more I just decided I wanted to get rid of it because it never seemed to work. Uh, in windy weather like this a tiny gust of wind would get to it and it would shut it down for at least 10 minutes which means that if you're in the middle of taking a shower and you get a little gust of wind uh, it would stop working for all that time and you'd have to just stand there and wait for it to reset. Uh, sometimes it would reset, sometimes it wouldn't, and I would end up just finishing a lot of the time uh, just with a cold shower, and I got tired of that. So uh, this works so much better. So I'm just going to heat up my water here. Once my water is heated up, I can uh, finish off my shower. Um, Probably should have started this earlier in the day, but uh, got plenty of sunshine, I'm sure, right? Hopefully. Don't want to be out here showering in the dark, do I? Okay, I think this is plenty warm. It's almost boiling, but that's okay, uh, because I'm just going to pour 
a little bit of this water into the bottle and then I will top it off. Well, easier said than done. I'm getting most of it in the bottle. Then I'll just top it off with a little water out of my tap till it gets a comfortable temperature. And then I like to have some hot water just waiting for me because I often find that I want a little more than this, especially if I'm washing my hair and my beard. Uh, I need a little more than just one bottle's worth. So I'll leave this sit, I, then I can top the bottle off uh, once I am ready and at that point. But at this point, you need to go away and I need a little bit of privacy. Uh, there's no sense in setting up privacy outside and then recording it, right? So uh, <laughs> I'm going to take my shower now and we'll reconvene for dinner. Um, enjoy a musical interlude. That went very well. I feel refreshed, nice, uh, be able to sleep a little bit better tonight. Uh, I ended up using two of these, which is uh, about a liter and a half of water. So not a lot of water, but I normally only use about three quarters to a full liter of water every morning to take a bath head to toe in a very specific way. But uh, at least this way I can pour the water over me or I can't really do that when I'm here just bathing at my sink. So uh, kind of a luxurious thing for me, believe it or not. Uh, and the one thing I have learned is I always turn my heater on before I uh, get set up and take a shower because it is a little chilly out there. Sun is going down and it's nice just to be able to get back in the van and have it warm in here. So that's what I did. Wow, just look at this. It is really getting beautiful out here. I'm hungry. I want to start dinner, but I'm just taking a few minutes to watch the sunset a little bit. That is the one great thing out here. This is not the most perfect camping, but you've got some great sunrises and sunsets. Well, sunrises, they tell me. Sunsets I can vouch for. All right, it's dinner time. I'm gonna get uh, just a really easy dinner going. Uh, burritos, you probably know by now, burritos. I've been on a burrito kick the last couple of weeks and it's all I really been wanting to eat. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I'm just being frugal, uh, but I actually like burritos. Uh, and I've got some ground beef I need to eat up, so I'll cook that up. I want some cheese again, and um, even though I've got the yellow bird, I think I'm going to use some of this Wajio salsa. really like this salsa too. My second favorite. And I'm going to make one little change to my normal routine of burritos. I normally use whole pinto beans, but today I have a can of refried beans, just to change things up a bit. You know what's funny is I've had a gym membership for a long time. Most of my van life I had a gym membership. In fact, for a while I had two gym memberships because showers were that important to me. I didn't care about spending the money. Uh, I had a really dirty job when I... Uh, I shouldn't say it that way. It makes it sound uncouth. But no, I had a, I had a really um, physical job and I'd get really dirty. Uh, the job I had when I first moved into my van... And so that's why I really didn't care about spending money on gym memberships just so that I would have the shower available. And when I say gym memberships, I don't mean I went in there and worked out. I had enough workout on my job. All I did was go in, take the shower, and leave. I just had two gym memberships because it depended on where I would go uh, on the weekends if I would hang around work, I would have that gym, or if I would go out uh, to LA or San Diego or something, then I would have uh, another gym that wasn't around my work. Uh, so it worked out really well. Um, 
But nowadays, I actually prefer just doing the shower that I just showed you. Uh, it just works so much better uh, than going to a gym. Or uh, I was doing truck stop showers for a little while, and those are nice. Uh, they're, they're usually fairly convenient, but they're expensive. And sometimes, uh, you know, you go in and they, they tell you, oh, you have to be a trucker in order to buy a truck stop shower here in this location. And I got tired of dealing with that. So I gave up on the truck stop showers, and that's when I came up with this method. Well, I haven't been sleeping too well lately. As much as I like East L.A., it's always felt like home, even though I've never actually lived there. But um, as much as I like that area, uh, I just wasn't sleeping good there. And I, I think it's just because it's busier. Although um, my family's house, uh, their street was really quiet. And so it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of action at night. But the first night, I, I didn't sleep well at all. I think I counted two or three cars that drove by all night long. Um, of course, it would have been quieter if I parked in their driveway, but I just don't like to do that. I always like to park in the streets, no matter what. And normally, I would park on a street that doesn't get a whole lot of traffic. Um, and so the first first night, I thought, well, this is pretty good. It's not It's not terribly busy here, but the next few nights, it was a little bit more busy and... Uh, I think that affected my sleep a little bit. So I may need to go to sleep early tonight. Well, these are pretty plain burritos. I probably should have taken a few minutes and prepped onion and bell pepper like I was thinking about, uh, but these would be good and tasty. I'll definitely get to that prep tomorrow. Oh, and then I <laughs> forgot to re-season my pan got lots to do tomorrow but that's okay because this is why we come out to BLM land so that we don't have to be rushed I don't have to go anywhere for two weeks if I don't want to so uh, whatever I didn't get to today can get done tomorrow or the day after that or the day after that but here I'm talking I need dinner actually looking at the pan now my seasoning's not too bad. I think uh, I think it'll just be a quick job of just adding some more seasoning to it. So that should be a nice quick job tomorrow. I think since it's nice and warm in here, since I was just doing the cooking, and I had a nice shower earlier, and had a couple of very tasty burritos, that's all coming together and making me just want to go to bed early. Uh, supposed to be a little chilly tonight, so I may need to turn my heater back on. I also may need to just have another cup of coffee, because I'm feeling like another cup of coffee, so that may happen. But, uh, <laughs> whatever I do here, I'm going to sign off. Uh, that's the one sure thing. So, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.